Hello everybody, I'm Stephen Allison. This is Full Time Devils. I'm joined by Mac, Sam and Ian to give you another Bournemouth preview. Now, uh, after the crazy goings on at Old Trafford on Sunday, we've got another game to look forward to. Uh, we need to win 19-0 to get into the Champions League. Can we do it? Adam? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it, Sam. Um, yeah. you've, you've seen the way we've been playing all season. Um, <laughs> You've seen that, and it's been clear we've got goals in us, so 19 <laughs> nil, why not? All right, Sam, have you got anything to add to that insightful bit of talk there from Adam? I think the only downside is, I mean, I agree with everything Adam's just said, the only downside is, of course, we can't play Fellaini, and we know what an attacking force he is, and he's been banging <laughs> in goals all season, and when he's not been scoring them, he's been setting them up. So if we could just deploy him as the second one in a 1 1 8, I think we'd do it easily. <laughs> We're looking at maybe 30 to 40 goals in this game. Wait, well, that's, that's unfair to allow Fellaini to play in them circumstances. Well, what do you think? It's, what do you almost, think? it's almost cheating. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so um, I think without Fellaini, it's more difficult, but um, certainly I think we'll be looking at 25 goals. So you think 25? Can we keep a clean sheet though then? That's the thing. We need to keep a clean sheet if we're going to go that's far. That's what I fear, really, being 18 nil up until the 80th minute. And Imagine if can... it was 18 nil, by the way. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> I would be serious now, I would be distraught. That would yeah, be the saddest 18, thing that could ever be in my life. So what funny. about 18 nil, 18 nil in the first half? And then they can't score, score in the second half. Absolutely. Or somebody misses a penalty in the last minute. Oh, oh God. <laughs> God. But actually, up front. But on a, on a semi serious note, it does look like Champions League is going to be, let's say, unlikely at this point, should we say? So, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us next season? We're probably not going to be in the Champions League. Do we see some of the bigger names like uh, David De Gea moving on? How's it going to affect our summer? Yeah, I was having this chat with producer Chris at Old Trafford yesterday and uh, we never get to hear producer Chris's opinions on football. But he had a completely opposite opinion to me where I think David De Gea might still stick around and he kind of just thinks, nah, he's gone. This year he's gone. And I, kinda, I just don't see that for some reason. Um... But he could be right, of course, and David De Gea might just piss off. Um, but I think it's because of the media attention, whereas last year it was a non-stop media circus about David yeah. De Gea, whereas this year it hasn't happened. But it's, mm. I mean, it is totally feasible that last year they said, look, we'll, we'll bump you up, we'll put you on a new contract, but obviously you'll just go next year. Well, that happened with Ronaldo, didn't it? There was all the talk around 2008, and then it all went quiet because he signed a new deal, and then he went in 2009. With, there was speculation. There was speculation, uh, a little bit of speculation towards the end of the season in, in 2009, but he still went. Because it, it, it was expected, everyone sort of knew it was going to happen. Mm. Yeah, so maybe it's a little bit like that. But they, um, I mean, there are reports, though, aren't there, that they, they've ended their interest in, in him and they're enjoying Ken Navas or maybe they want Thibaut Courtois. <sighs> no, no. Yeah. Oh, Courtois, I think, is a, is a really good thing for Man United because Chelsea have performed much worse than we have. And I think he wants to go. And Courtois, even though he hasn't had a great season, is still considered like one mm. of the top like three or four goalkeepers, or especially young goalkeepers. So if Madrid go in for him, then I don't think De Gea is going to move to any other club other than Madrid. That's the only danger. Maybe Barcelona, but I don't know whether they're looking for a goalkeeper. What like. about? What, okay. what, I, everyone links um, him to Real these days. But don't you think, David De Gea... Might look at Atletico and think, oh, that's a shout. Why oh, did yeah. I leave? Why mm. did I leave Atletico? They built something there. But I don't know if he'd ask why he left because uh, like, he's grown massively and he's got new experiences of football and a new culture and he's probably enjoyed all of that. But certainly, uh, you can't imagine that he'd not want to go back to an extent. Because mm, surely they're on. I know Real Madrid are obviously one of the biggest clubs in the world and Atletico will never be on that financial standpoint or anything like that. But they're as big as them in terms of how good they are. Well, they could be European champions. Yeah, so well, the, either of them will be European champions on it. It's going to be one way, one place or the other. So, yeah. if he if he only wants to go back to Madrid for his misses, then there's options there, isn't there? Yeah. She's a knob. But I suppose away from um, <laughs> away away from David de Gea in terms of recruitment, I suppose it doesn't necessarily make too much of a difference if you go for 
more senior players, I think older players will want to play in the Champions League because they'll be more aware that their time is running out. But if you look at younger players, I mean, we didn't sign Renato Sanchez, but players like that will join clubs like Manchester United if they think they're building something and also because they get paid a shed ton of money. So I was going to ask if you think it's going to affect the recruitment. Um, and obviously Sam's just touched on it there. I see people saying things along the lines of like, Mares or Canty won't leave Leicester to join someone like United. Is that just a bonkers saying, or do you think there's actually something in that? I think Canty will have offers from teams that have actually got Champions League football, so and so yeah. will Mares. Um, but I don't think no. Why? It's it's still at the end of the day, it's still you're leaving Leicester to join Manchester United, and I know this is probably a dangerous thing to say, but in the next few years, you would expect United to outperform Leicester, despite the amazing season they have had this year. But, obviously, <laughs> I don't want to speak too soon. Um, but I think if we get a new manager, which I think now that top four is impossible. Wow. Unlikely, Adam. Unlikely, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I don't want to write here. And now that Champions League is unlikely and Louis van Gaal will probably not get top four, I think we will have a new manager. So then I think it's a case of a new manager almost is able to say, look, that stuff's behind me. Nothing to do with me. Yeah. You come in one year out of the Champions League, one year yeah. we'll be straight back in it. So I'm not too concerned about how that will affect our recruitment process. Yeah. Right, enough of that. We know Sam's moved places before you all start commenting. So here's what everyone's got to say about the incident at Old Trafford in United on YouTube. Really disappointing that Manchester United haven't got Champions League football next season. I was half expecting it. Manchester City got the necessary point against Swansea to secure Champions League football next season, barring a 19-0 victory by United against Bournemouth on Tuesday night. It's been a failure of a season with all that money spent. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I've still got the other day hanging over my head in terms of I was distraught. I wasn't even there. But just reading what was going on just hurt a lot. Um, but well done to the staff and everyone at the ground who dealt with dealt with the situation incredibly well. This season has left a much more bitter taste in my mouth considering the fact that for me last season I felt like we ended on a much more positive note. I felt like there was more of hope. There was a much more vivid sense of direction going forward under Louis van Gaal. And I think the sense of belief for the fans has almost been lifted this season. And I think the patience has worn thin. We should be doing a lot better. The board, the owners, they've got to take a long, hard look at themselves in the mirror from the very top down. We've got to get rid of Louis van Gaal. Hopefully he resigns after getting us FA Cup glory. Win the FA Cup, get sacked. It's the new chat shit, get banged. Ahead of the game, I just play the under-21s. What's there to play for now? Absolutely nothing. Give the young lads a chance. They've had a wicked season at their level. Uh, give them give them a chance. The lads who haven't really played first team this season, the ones who haven't really had that breakthrough, but have also done brilliant at under-21 level, just stick them on. Obviously play Carrick. Final game at Old Trafford. So it's still no contract. I think changes need to be made, not only just on a managerial level, but I think changes need to ma be made in all sorts of sectors, from the board level, the managerial level, squad level, staff level, everywhere. I think we need to make sure that we've constantly think on a forward momentum basis, not to be lingering on the fact that we've given Louis van Gaal many opportunities, two years, to be able to kind of get something going. And I feel like not much has changed. And although the FA Cup is still within our grasp, um, I don't see a sort of a positive result in the second year under Louis van Gaal. But at least we've still got an FA Cup final. Hopefully we can win that. It will give the youngsters, like Sofo, Cementa, Rashford and Martial, a big boost. So that's what everybody had to say in United on YouTube. Obviously, we usually do this in the Monday review show, but there's no review because there was no game. So, lads, do you want to talk to me about what we saw at Old Trafford this weekend? Sam, we'll start with you. OK, well, I was doing the final day of the season for the Football Republic Live. So I was in the studio there and in front of me was two laptops. One with, oh, plug up, one with the City game on, one with the United game on. And so it wasn't all that clear and the information was just sort of being drip fed. And initially, although with no idea what was really happening and we spoke to Adam on the day and he said how calm everybody at Old Trafford was and how relaxed and he was having a bit of a laugh. From the outside, to be watching that is genuinely scary. Like to think there were the 80,000 people somewhere, that they're very vulnerable to, to that. Because what can you do? You're like, it's incredible that, that it went so well in terms of the evacuation. It was so smoothly operated. And I think that obviously we now know that it wasn't a problem it wasn't really an issue but at the time when that information was unknown and it looked like that's what it was and we all assumed that's what it is because that's the world we live in it was crazy Ian 
Yes, I um, I was doing some colouring in on a bit of paper that, that I've got in front of me. Um, but that's not because I think what Sam was saying wasn't serious, but it's because I've heard him say it before when we've had private personal chats about this because we call each other every night and an hour before we go to bed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought... The only funny thing I thought was that... Um, the away fans get evacuated last. I think that was good use of priorities. Um, but, it's, but yeah, it's pretty impressive how quickly the stadium was sort of emptied. And it's it's all kind of good to know that, it, you know, if you're sat in Old Trafford watching a match and something does go wrong, that they've got it covered. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. Like, it's not like it's, um, like, Fulham's ground. It's not Craven Cottage where there's barely anyone there. Or it's not the Etihad, where most people have uh, evacuated already by the looks of it at the start of a game. Like, um, yeah, so that's good. But, yeah, the main thing is just, is it's just a real anticlimax, I guess, the season where, you know, because of already knowing the City Swansea result and we couldn't put pressure on them with a result, is we're just going at the game, it's just like, yeah, it's just a bit of a sort of meek ending that's like, right, we can't get Champions League. It's all a bit disappointing. Um... And I guess like the concern just goes on to what's going to happen next season. How are we going to improve? Yeah. All right. Adam, obviously you was with me yesterday for all, all that going on. It was a very calm evacuation of Old Trafford. Um, give me your take. You're trying to use me as your alibi, Steve. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wasn't with you the whole time, mate. <laughs> um, well, like, like, wow. Well, I didn't, No one really knew what the hell was going on. But credit to the Manchester United fans for the way they reacted. I mean, nobody really got over the top, started panicking, started pushing and shoving at the turnstile. Because when I got to the turnstile, I walked up to W15, walked round to the back of the queue as you normally do. And there's a queue as there normally is um, because they search everyone as you go in. But I didn't notice the turnstiles were closed for a good 30 seconds. So I'm assuming other people were like that. And then you look down, the turnstiles are closed. People are coming out. And you'd expect people to panic a lot more than they did. And they didn't. So credit to the way it was handled and the way everyone reacted. Didn't go over the top. Because obviously, we didn't really know what was going on. But the stewards that were there actually spoke to us. Um, I was with Greg as well. And we went up to them and just started chatting to him. And he told us exactly what he thought of the situation and what the situation was um, as far as he was aware. So, yeah, it was handled quite well. Um, obviously, now we know it was a dummy device left by a company that <laughs> did some training in there or something. So, yeah, just picturing someone. Did you remember to bring the same one away with you? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean... It was handled very well. Credit to the police, credit to the stewards. Everybody seemed to be very professional in doing the job that they did. And one thing I have seen on social media since it all happened is a lot of people are sort of trying to pin the blame on the club, that the club is so poorly run nowadays that this sort of thing slips through the gaps, as if that this wouldn't have happened now Sir Alex Ferguson, or wouldn't, wouldn't have happened when Sir Alex Ferguson was in charge, which is absolutely nuts. So anyway... He, say that, but he did always check the toilets, didn't he? <laughs> he was very thorough in his pre-match routine, yeah. So... Um, Let's get into the starting eleven then tomorrow for the uh, sorry not tomorrow for the game against Bournemouth at Old Trafford the replayed game against Bournemouth at Old Trafford. Are we going to go with a fresh start, fresh legs, looking ahead towards the FA Cup final, or are we going to play the strong team and see the season out like we should do? Sam, we'll go with you first. He'll play the same team that the squad that was um, the start eleven that was given for the uh, game on Sunday. I think that players will be rested because of the final on Saturday because of the turnaround of recovery is a little bit shorter. So I think like so Michael Carrick will be dropping out for Ander Herrera, people like that. But if it was up to me, totally my decision, I'd blend the youth in it and the, the more senior players because you still want to win the game. We still want to make sure we finish fifth and lose out. If worst case scenario, on goal difference, you don't want to, because at least, I mean, that feels, does it feel better than miss it? It doesn't make a difference, does it? Um, I would put David De Gea in goal. I'd play Varela and Borthwick Jackson at right and left back. I'd play Phil Jones with Daly Blind. I'd give Smalling a rest. Um, I would play Ander Herrera with Wayne Rooney in the middle because Rooney will be all right. Um, I would put Memphis on. I would play Pereira and I would play Lingard. And then um, I would put 
Rashford up top. All right, it's a pretty strong team. Ian, do you want to give us yours? Uh, so, De Gea, obviously, Borthwick, Jackson, Blinn, Smalling. I'm saying Valencia, but I guess I'm thinking if, if you're going to, if you do want to rest someone, maybe him going up and down the wing, you want to rest him for Wembley. Um, but I'll say Valencia. Rooney and Herrera in midfield, getting rid of Carrick, um, keeping him fit for the FA Cup. Although there is a worry that I think it could be Carrick's last game for United. I don't know if he signed a, a contract yet. Um, could be I don't know. So he might want to bow out at Old Trafford. But I'm putting Herrera in. And then Memphis, Mata, Martial and Rashford. Um, playing Memphis because I just think we, we should be getting a point to move us up to fifth um, anyway. But I, I don't think we should sell Memphis after one bad season, especially if we can't buy incredible players without the Champions League, potentially. And I, I think someone's just got to manage him well and just put him on and say, come on, like, you're basically, you've, you've been shit, but you're better than this. <laughs> That'll do wonders for his confidence, I'm sure. <laughs> That's what I'd do if I was a manager. I'd just be like, you've been, you've been shit, mate, honestly. You're, you're supposed to be good, so why don't you just start being good again? Uh, all right, Adam, do you want to give us your eleven? Yeah, so I'd go with... I'd keep the hair in between the sticks. I'd go with Varea. Um, Varea, Smalling, Roshan Williams, and uh, Beckham Jackson. Now, Twanzebe would be there, but obviously he's not been as fit as Roshan. And Roshan has done well, deserves his chance. Um, and I think we should use this as an opportunity to give people their, their debuts or some match time at Old Trafford. Um, what have we got to play for, really? Our spot in the, the, the league's confirmed, fifth place. May as well just let some of the ads have, lads have a kick around. We should, um, have, Carrick... we should have to win, Adam, because currently Southampton are fifth. Yes, we do still have to win. Oh, yeah. mate, we're going to get Europa League football. Who cares? Yeah, it's uh, I don't wanna, no one wants to finish sixth, do they? I'd, 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 better, I'd but... rather finish tenth than in the Europa League spots. That's... Well, we're going to get Europa from winning the FA Cup, hopefully, anyway, so... Don't matter. That's the only thing that pisses me off. I did, didn't have Carrick in my team, but now the guys have mentioned that it could be, it kind of makes sense. It could be Carrick's last game at Old Trafford. So I've stuck my Carrick in there. Um, I've gone with Carrick, Schneiderlin, and then Pereira in the hole with Marshall, Memphis, and Rashford. I would love to see that. All right, sound. Uh, I, I agree with what Adam has just said. Two and Zabi and Roshan Williams have been knocking on the door of the first team and it would be a great opportunity to give them some debuts at Old Trafford. Maybe one in the first half, one in the second half. Let's see how it goes. So, listen, that's the starting 11s. Talk to me about Bournemouth. Is it going to affect them? Are they going to have a different mentality to having to replay the game, coming back up north for all this lot? How do you think it's going to affect them? Did they, did they travel back, guys? Do, do yes, they've gone back, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ian, we'll start They're with you. going to be pissed off. Uh, yeah, I, I think may, maybe it's reading too too much into it, but I, I do think there's going to be a, a bit of an end of the season where it maybe is a little bit of a joke coming back. And, you know, they, they've done what they need to do and they've survived. Um, although saying that, I think they can move up like a good three positions maybe if, if they win. Um, I, don't, I don't have the table in front of me, who, who knows, but... Yeah, you'd expect that they'll be having a bit of fun. The season's over, they're on holiday, um, and we really should be, be beating them. Um, oh. But yeah, everyone loves coming to Old Trafford and trying their best. So, I don't know. It's Bournemouth, isn't it? We should be beating Bournemouth easily. Shouldn't we even be having this conversation. In December, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Sam, so we, do you give us your start. thoughts on Bournemouth? <laughs> Um, I think if you ignore Leicester, Bournemouth are to a point the success story of the season. They're an incredibly small club, limited finances, and they spent their maximum um, in the transfer window. And then most of those players got injured in the first sort of few games. So I think it's incredible how well they've done. They've totally switched off, though, from hit once they hit 40 points um, and just haven't bothered. They haven't looked that interested, to be honest. Um, so I think it, they would, it should be a comfortable victory, whether we're getting 19 goals, I'm not really sure. But um, I think they've had a great year, but they've, they're, they're not worried now. They're safe. That's all they cared about. And once that pressure was off, they've, they're not asked. I want someone to get relegated with 40 points, just so that myth gets totally <laughs> ruined. 
So people, well, when they get 40 points, with... don't relax. I want someone to get 45 points to get relegated. I think I think people have been relegated on 41 or 42. It has happened. It's not, wow. it's not something that's never happened, I think. So, Adam, anything else about Bournemouth? Do you reckon they're going to bring many fans with them for a Tuesday night game? It's a long, long way. I think the club have... The club have tried to preempt that, haven't they, by saying... Well, no, it's free entry, but the travel won't be free. The time yeah, but needed. You're going to have to leave at, at least dinner time to get up here. So yeah, that's a day off work, school. potentially two. Yeah, so it is, a, it is... What I would suggest to anyone that cannot go to the game, you've received your ticket for free. Give it to some charity or some kids or... Yeah, give it a kid. Someone that really wants to go... How to... are kids going to get there? With their dad or something. Kids are resourceful oh, nowadays. They've got work. Twitter. Pinch high. At home watching Jeremy Kyle all day. Get off your ass. Take your kid to the football. The tickets are cheap. Just do it. Know what I mean? It's nice. All right. So let's leave it on this. Give us your score predictions. We're going to start with Ian. What do you reckon? I reckon 3 1 to United. They're going to want to play well and express themselves. Last game at Old Trafford. 3 1. Sam? 19 2. 19 oh, no, just no, two goals! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hard. Yeah, remember what we were talking about earlier? 18 0 at half time, and then you. <laughs> yeah, you can't well, stop scoring in the second half. Goals. Now I'm going 0 uh, 0 half time, 1 0 full time. Oh, I was going to go the same thing. I was going to go 0 0 half time, 2 1 to United in the second half, is how I'm going to go. Listen, thank you to these lads. Go give them all a follow on Twitter. Thank you to you lot for watching. And uh, for joining us throughout the whole season, this hopefully is the last preview that we've got for no, a league not. game of the season. We've, we've still got FA a very Cup special final. FA Cup one coming up, though. FA Cup final preview coming up soon. So thank you all for joining us. Stick it in the comments below what you think. Who should be giving debuts out to? Can we win 19 or more? Nil. Bang it all in the comments, and we'll see you very soon. Champions League's in our hands, guys. Come Just on. started. I've been selected on the bench, which I'm not happy about. But, uh, hey, that's football. Take note, Louis Van Gaal. Uh, what you call it? And uh, yeah, I'm just buying me time for my moment and uh, enjoying the game.